Body modifications are no stranger to the world of sideshow, whether it be people permanently decorating their body through the form of tattooing or people altering their flesh through the use of body jewellery, all in the name of entertainment. But what about when somebody doesn't alter their body for entertainment, but rather for beauty? In today's episode of Unusual As Usual, we're researching the horrific history of the Golden Lotus, aka foot binding. The practice of foot binding originated in the 10th century during the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period in China. There are a number of stories about its origin, including a story of Pan Yunu, who had delicate feet and danced barefoot on a stage designed in the shape of a golden lotus flower. The emperor expressed great admiration and said lotus springs from her every step. It's said that this quote gave rise to the term golden lotus and lotus feet, which have both been used to describe foot binding. Whether it was their trademark gait or just the idea that these women would never have to lift a finger, bound feet became so alluring and attractive that they were practically required in order to find a suitable husband. Due to this, generation after generation of Chinese women endured the painful practice for nearly 10 centuries. The earliest archaeological evidence for foot binding dates to the tomb of Huang Shang, who died in 1243, around the age of 17. She had her feet bound with six foot long gauze strips and was buried with a pair of narrow pointed silk shoes. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the point in the story where things take a gruesome turn. The process of foot binding started around the age of five to 10, before the bones of the feet had chance to fully develop. First, each foot would be soaked in a warm mixture of herbs and animal blood. This was intended to soften the foot and aid in the binding process. Then the toenails were cut back as far as possible and the toes were forcibly broken before being tightly wrapped in cotton bandages. Next, the arch of the foot was broken. This was bandaged in a figure of eight movement, getting tighter on every pass. This caused the broken foot to fold at the arch and press the toes underneath the sole. The end of the bandage was then sewn shut to stop it from slipping. As if this wasn't bad enough, the whole process was then repeated for the second foot. Generally, it was an older female member of the family or a professional foot binder who carried out the initial breaking and ongoing binding of the feet for the next two years, with the goal being to reach what is called the three inch golden lotus. Small bound feet were considered beautiful while regular sized unbound feet were deemed crude. The ideal length for a bound foot being three Chinese inches, around four inches, 10 centimeters in Western measurement. The most common problem with bound feet was infection. Despite the amount of care taken in regularly trimming the toenails, they would often ingrow, becoming infected. The tightness of the binding meant that the circulation to the feet was extremely poor and the circulation to the toes was virtually cut off. So any injuries to the feet were unlikely to heal and gradually worsened over time, often leading to septic shock. It has been estimated that by the 19th century, 40 to 50% of all Chinese women may have had lotus feet. There had been attempts to end the practice over the years. Firstly, in 1636, when the Manchu leader declared the founding of the new Qing dynasty, but unfortunately it failed. They tried again two years later in 1638, but once again, it failed to hold. 26 years later, it was once again attempted to outlaw the practice, but once again, that too failed. It wasn't until the early 20th century that foot binding actually eventually began to die out. Although never technically a sideshow attraction, over the years, curiosity collectors, including myself, had 
displayed golden lotus shoes as a grim reminder of a bygone era. This pair of silk lotus shoes measures three inches. They have a solid heel and have been decorated with elaborate hand-stitched embroidery depicting flowers. In most parts of China, the practice had virtually disappeared by 1949. And in 1999, the very last shoe factory making lotus shoes closed its doors for good. Today, only a small handful of elderly Chinese women are still alive that have bound feet. And there we have it, the horrific history of the golden lotus, foot binding. It's surprising the things we do in the name of beauty. What do you think? Are normal feet beautiful or are they best kept covered up? Let me know in the comment section below and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for this week, but remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more modified marbles, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.